In October of 2020, I got a call from a casual acquaintance of mine, Skylar Sarkis. He told me his band, Taking Meds, was going to be recording a full-length album in Salem, Massachusetts at God City with the legendary Kurt Ballou, and they were looking for a videographer to tag along. I told him I would be interested and asked what the gig paid. He said we would get to that later. This answer was off-putting, but being an aspiring filmmaker with not many prospects, I felt as though I didn't have a choice. I asked when they wanted me to start. He responded, tomorrow, and told me I'd need to arrange for my own transportation from New York City. I reluctantly packed my best camera and booked the cheapest bus ticket I could find. I was headed to Salem. Start the video. Let's start the video. Salem was a beautiful, bustling town, full of wonderful people and exciting culture. The other guys in Taking Meds seemed really great. Skyler was a little bit of a different story. On the phone, he was talking to me like we were best friends. In person, he proved to be a uh, little less friendly, not to mention kind of challenging to work with. For the first day or so, he seemed to not trust that I was even running my camera. He kept asking me if we were starting. Are we starting? Is this part Yeah. Are we starting? It's, yeah, me and Ben are we starting? Are we starting? Are we starting? Are you filming? Are you rolling? It needs to start on me. Are we starting? It was clear from the beginning that Skyler's idiosyncrasies were going to impede the recording process. He had a habit of interrupting productive conversations to remind his other bandmates that they worked for him. Sometimes he would zone out completely. When everyone else was invited downstairs to meet Kurt, Skyler stayed in the apartment playing video games. When I tried to ask him about this, he told me to be quiet because he was trying to concentrate. I mean, I haven't even met the singer yet. The guy like hasn't even stopped by the studio once. So, um, I mean, I'd like to at least have some idea who I'm working with. No, I think it's going really well. I think the first day, um, it was just kind of cool to have Kurt get like an idea of who I am and what I do and like what I bring to the table and how I inspire my guys and my band. And um, it's not really about how much got done in the first day it's just it's just about you know making a first impression and making that connection because that's what that's what carries you into the future and uh, sets yeah, you up I'm, okay. I'm actually doing an interview right now Maybe you're wondering, you know, 
why am I playing video games while everyone else is working on the record? Well, John Lennon once said, if you don't have any good ideas, just play video games and they will come to you. There needs to be some kind of division of labor. And my job is not to actually play the songs, it's to take ownership over them so that I can keep track of the themes of the record. What are the themes of the record? Leadership, compassion, management, time management, professionalism, marketing, management, general steps along the path to success that I've been kind enough to share with whoever's willing to listen. And it better be somebody because otherwise I don't know what might happen. What do you mean by that? This wasn't the first time that Skylar alluded to resorting to drastic measures if the album wasn't received the way he wanted it to be. In other words, I don't know what might, what maybe might happen to me, you know, if this record doesn't go well. What exactly do you mean by that? I maybe, you know, terrible things happen to people, you know? People make uh, decisions in the heat of passion, and who could say? Of her taking meds, they are absolutely terrible. Would you ever listen or recommend to taking meds to anyone that you know? I would not recommend listening to taking meds. In fact, I feel bad for the city of Rochester, New York. Taking meds sucks. Would you recommend taking meds to anyone? The concept or the band? Do you think that anyone will listen to this record once it's completed? I know I won't. How do you think, um, how do you think, like, it's been going so far? I mean, as well as it could, you know. Uh, it is what it is. Um, yeah. How do you think the overall record is going to turn out? I think it showed some promise at some points. Um, it's not going to be the best. Uh, yeah. What would it'll you, be fine. What would you say has uh, negatively impacted the recording process so far? Hmm. Negative. Well. First thing I would say that comes to mind is uh, Skylar Sarkis. Um, guys, just a lot to deal with. You know, I've known him for a long time, so I'm I'm used to his shenanigans and uh, the fact that he really doesn't give a shit about this record. Um, he's really only here so he can funnel more money from Greg Sarkis's pocket. Poor guy. But uh, you know, that being said. I'm only here to funnel some money from Greg Sarkis's pockets too, so. There's only so many times you can like tell somebody, you know, you're here because I hired you, you're here because my dad hired you. You know, you're, you're not a person while you're here, you're a, an employee of me and someone who, you're at my disposal essentially, you know. And I, I hate to sound harsh, but I, I actually, that's, a, that's me putting it lightly. Yeah, he's paying us to be here, you know look out for Skyler, make a record with Skyler, make sure he doesn't run away, fucking, I don't know, yeah. What do you think about uh, Skyler's dad paying everybody to be here? What? Yeah. Ben, ben said that Skyler's dad is paying everybody to be here. He's paying them? Uh, I got an invoice from Skyler's dad. You know, you may think, well, Skylar, why aren't you in there, you know, playing all the parts? I mean, you're not not only like a marketing genius and a business entrepreneur, but you're you're also a multi-instrumentalist, accomplished 
uh, you know, you, you could have studied jazz at Eastman, but you didn't because you, you didn't even need it because of how good you are at instruments. I thought Ben said you couldn't play. Did he really, did he really say that? Uh. Oh, am I playing back anything? Can we just do that take one more time? Uh, I mean, we've been working on this part for an hour and a half. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the best that we're going to do, you know? I just want to do the take one more time. It, it sounds totally fine, like, there's going to be a vocal, Ben's part is covering, like, whatever ugliness you might be hearing. I just, it's I just feel like if you wake up tomorrow and I'm gone, you'd wish that you let me do this take one more time. There's so much responsibility on my shoulders, like, what's that guy's name? Maps? What's that guy's name? I don't know. The guy with the world on his shoulders. Atlas? Atlas. There's so much world on my shoulders. It's like, what is the, what is the first thing you think of when you put on a piece of music? What's the theme, you know? And that's what I have to, I have to be like, as I have to be at peace, I have to be centered, I have to be aligned at all times so I can keep my eye on the prize is in terms of the themes of this record. Because that's, at the end of the day, the guitar can sound like fucking shit. Or at the end of the day, the guitar can be, you know, absolute wizardry, but if there's no themes, then it's not worth a shit. It's better off in the garbage. So. What, what are the themes? Of what? The, the themes of, of the record. Well, the themes are the themes are fluid. I mean, conceptually, it's fluid. You know, it's the themes are always changing. Another unusual aspect of the experience was that Skyler insisted on staying at a Radisson in Nashville, New Hampshire, every night, even though the band was paying for the on-site apartment and there were enough beds for everyone. Nashville was about 45 minutes in either direction, so it turned out to be quite the commute. Not to mention, Skyler was having issues with his rewards membership. Uh, who are you calling? I'm trying to fucking call this Radisson customer service and the fucking lady inside isn't helping me at all. Yeah, um, I'm trying to redeem my points for my current stay at your Nashua, New Hampshire location. And, um, I'm dealing with Tara inside who I'm shocked has a job in, um, in hospitality, frankly, but um, all that aside, uh, I'm just hoping that you can uh, make my day a little better and we can uh, put my points towards my stay so that my label doesn't continue to hemorrhage money that is supposed to be going towards my band's breakout record. Okay, sir, um, I'm really sorry to hear about your experience with Tara. Um, would you be able to provide me with your account number and first and last name, please? Uh, Skylar Sarkis, and then uh, just type that in and the account number should be there. Okay. Can you spell Sarkis for me, please? Uh, yeah, it's the normal spelling, S-A-R-K-I-S. Uh, Skylar's been a bit difficult to, to work with this whole time. Uh, he's just constantly saying negative comments about the way we play everything um he's just storming out angrily what do you think about him staying at the radisson versus with the at the house here with everybody else diva so i ha see here that you uh, only opened up your account yesterday is that correct um that not I, I don't really remember um I just, okay. you know, it's been a pleasure being a part of your rewards program. Um, happy to jump off of the Radisson team and, and you know, uh, 
apply that same loyalty to another one of your competitors um, rewards programs if if this call doesn't um, bear any fruit so just maybe keep that in mind the word trio um, concerning our future as a band is in the air if you will maybe maybe you could look up maybe you could look up the stays on my dad's credit card from the past two years and then apply them to my rewards account because clearly they haven't been uh, doing that themselves. Um, yeah, sir, I'm sorry. Uh, our, our rewards program policy states that previous stays uh, not under the rewards program cannot be applied uh, once you open up an account. I'd like to speak to someone else, please. So what's the problem so you apply the 14,000 points you and then whatever 6,000 points equals in dollars will have either my dad or our record label pay for what do you think uh how do you think the the vibe could be better and what do you th how do you think taking meds could be better trio how about this how about we put the f how many did you say i have five five thousand points complimentary points sir all right, well, how about you add another complimentary 500 points to that, and then we apply that for a partial night's stay? Me, John, Alex, just like, just the important members, you know, the ones uh, who really hold the band together and really do most of the work. So, um, yeah, I'd say a trio would be real nice. I've already spoken to the label. I've already spoken to my dad. They say I'm hemorrhaging cash by refusing to stay with my band in the in the band's quarters. You think James Hatfield and Lars Ulrich share a room together? Is that how you think they made the Black Album? I gotta fucking call my dad. No, yeah, yeah. Everything's really, really good. No, no, no. It's it's yeah. I'm just call. I was just calling to say hi. He's nice. He's he really likes like me and the stuff he thinks it's gonna be really good um once we get it out there you know he thinks that like the market is really thirsty for stuff like this right now and he said he he thinks that what i'm bringing to the table is kind of exactly what the consumer needs so if you would change one thing about the band what would you change the singer yeah i think it was a good investment for sure okay yeah, no, I know you're busy. All right, I'll talk to you later. Love you. Let me hang up. As the days went on, Skyler's behavior towards myself and his bandmates became increasingly erratic, and he remained fixated on the dispute he was having with the Radisson Customer Service Department, seemingly to the point of delusion about the state of his rewards portfolio. So I don't have, yeah, I don't have enough for a full night's stay. But so that's why I need to use up those points for a partial night stay and then I need to stay there the rest of the time that we're here, the rest of the seven days. And the, that needs to be paid for by the label and come out of the recoup. And hopefully that we can sell this fucking thing so that we can, we can cover that. And if not, then I'll file chapter 11. I don't give a fuck. But that's another conversation that we're going to have. And... If this doesn't go over well, you're gonna you're gonna be there filming that as well, pro bono. But I'm not gonna stay in the hotel for one night to use up my partial points to build my re rewards portfolio, and then the next, and then switch environments and stay with these fucking assholes upstairs where it smells like farts. So, did you? Um, skip like the first day of class for how to be a director where they tell you to fucking say action. Yep. Because of course on the last day of recording bass, I'm the one who has to go to the fucking music store to get new strings for John. Because the label couldn't send new strings because I've used up too many, I've used up too much of the funds. Staying at the Radisson, that's a problem for me to be comfortable so that I can be at my best and make sure that this, that this record goes down in history as our best one. I'm supposed to do that 
sleeping on the fucking floor like an idiot like everybody else that I've that my dad has hired for this band you know it's not like my dad can go to the store and get John the strings my dad's never been to a music store yeah I mean I'm glad you guys had a good time it's definitely a possibility that I'll have to hire another group of musicians to just redo the parts but we'll see uh, redo the parts that we wrote we could probably hire someone to just be the new singer of the band you know, we're making this video for my album, my band. I just feel like you're not getting enough of me on the camera. You know, you're you're filming filming pretty things, pretty reflections and stuff. You're getting too much too much of John and a little too much of Alex and not enough of me. See, the, the idea is that I'm the face of this thing. That's what the label pays for. That's why the label put, has me put me puts me up at the Radisson every night. So not only can I build my rewards portfolio with the Radisson Corporation, but also so that I'm well rested because this is the money maker. It's important that we show the viewer that this is about me, not about taking meds or the other guys that are that I that I've hired to be. Uh, temporarily in the band and it's certainly not about you or your artistic impulses whatsoever it's so let's just keep the focus on me and because I'm being bled dry my father's being bled dry uh, the label doesn't want to send any more money they say I'm staying at, at the Radisson and that's wh where all the money's going but I I have rewards points that are null and void at the end of the fiscal year. Let's just, you know, keep your eye on the ball from here on out. Just consider this your final warning, all right? I needed a break from Skylar, so I spent the next few hours filming the other guys, who were working tirelessly to make sure that the record got finished in the short window of time that, that was left. It was a nice reprieve from the abuse I had been enduring, but that pleasantness wore off quickly when we stepped outside for a smoke break and made a shocking discovery. Skylar had vanished. This is a fucking huge yikes. What if he has other, he has another key for that car. Big yikes. I'm pretty sure. With him? Definitely drove. How do we approach this question? I didn't ask him question? where he took his keys. Yeah, how do we approach this question? Do we just wait for him to get back? I don't know. Trust it. Knowing him, he's this. Knowing him for he's, sure. He's driving the car. Knowing him for sure. What are we gonna do if not only the car is gone, but Skylar is gone? Like not a good situation. I don't know, dude. Just like uh, you know, take it easy on that. I know oh. it's like you know, it's gonna be okay, it's not your fault. Skylar's disappearance cut the recording session short, since the only thing left to record were his vocals. Upon hearing the news, Smart Punk and Skylar's father both pulled their funding from the record. This meant that the financial responsibility for the remaining studio rental fees was going to fall on John, since he was the only member of the band with a credit card. He seemed really disappointed. I was disappointed too. It seemed pretty clear that I wasn't going to get paid, and this trip had been a nightmare. Not only that, but Salem seemed really cool and I was hoping I would get to experience more of the city. I caught a bus back to New York, assuming I wouldn't hear from Skylar ever again. Lo and behold, a month later, Skylar reached out, asking me to come down to John's Brooklyn studio to finish the documentary. I was pretty reluctant at first, but he insisted that I come down, assuring me that I would finally be paid, and also threatening me with legal action if I did not comply. Yeah, so back in New York. Uh, I just went missing for a month, so. Where did you, uh, you said you went missing? Where did you go? Yeah, so I wasn't really feeling the, the vibe when we were in Salem. Um, I think really it's on the label because I didn't know that, like, car service back and forth from my hotel was going to be um, was gonna go like into our recoup like I thought that that was just gratis from the label and uh, you know I think there were the issues that we had with the at the Radisson too where 
the label just wasn't, um, there was just some miscommunication and I didn't, um, they kept switching my rooms around and that was really jarring for me. So I just wasn't getting a lot of sleep in Salem. So it's really, it's better for me because, you know, I got a California King here. I takes up like most of my apartment, but I'm either like in bed sleeping or like sitting up in bed, like thinking about like the next move for the band. So, um, that's all I need. But it's better because, yeah, so now we're here in New York, like, doing the vocals, and I just think it's a much better fit um, to make this record, like, what it really needs to be. Like, I needed to, like, not work in Salem under, under those circumstances. I can taste the violence, and I can taste the silence. Are, are those the lyrics that we're like gonna go with for that part? Mm -hmm. I, I, I think that you might be able to have something a little better. Like I don't know if that really does it for the song. Mm. Like, yeah. Do, do you have anything else that you? That no, you I felt like that was like the best thing I could come up with with the time that I had. What have you been like doing for the past month that? Well. I've been missing. The guy was missing. And like writing stuff or Well, after God City, you know, I went missing and Right, right. Now now we're here. Where where were you? Like do you remember or I mean they must have gone somewhere. You were missing, but yeah. should we uh let's just get a few more takes. We'll just just power through it. Hey Alex, do you think you could go out in the hall for this take? Kind of a lot of guys in here. After vocals were finished, I was very relieved. I thought the documentary was wrapped and I could finally be paid. When I followed up a few days later with Skyler, this didn't seem to be the case. He insisted that I come over to his house and bring my camera, saying that there was more work to be done. Are you getting dressed up? Yeah. What What's that for? Um, meeting with some, meeting with some big wigs, some label people in the city. I thought uh, Smart Punk was gonna put this record out. Yeah, well, I'm just keeping my options open, you know. I, they were, you know, I've uh, I sent out several emails over the past couple of weeks, kind of shopping it around and. Um, this is one of, of several pretty big names that I've heard back from. Didn't you sign a contract, though? Yeah, but, you know, those things are always kind of fluid, not really set in stone. Could I come to the, to the meeting? No, no, that's, that's definitely not the vibe at all. Oh, it's it's going to be, yeah doing like a, a dinner thing and uh, I'm really trying to to impress them so no you can't come dinner where at uh, Peter Luger so nice yeah so after Skyler told me that he was going to Peter Luger to shop the the record to other labels. He went out to his car and he's been sitting here for 45 minutes exactly like this. This is actually the first time that he's like pulled his hands away from his face. I think that's a peanut butter sandwich. I think maybe he was lying. Uh, 
how was the, how was the meeting? What? At, oh, at Peter's. Good. Yeah, it was good. It was really good. At Peter, did, how, what did you get at Peter Luger's? Uh, steak. So. Wait, aren't you vegan? Uh, well, yeah. Uh, look, Luke. If you were gonna travel in the south of France and a uh, um, French milkmaid offered you uh, some kind of Danish, are you gonna say, uh, oh no, I don't respect your culture because I'm vegan, or are you gonna eat the fucking Danish? It was a good, it, the meeting was good. So, that's enough documentary for today. Fucking starving. Wait, I thought you had steak. Yeah. Well, I, di I didn't have breakfast, so. Okay, that's enough for today. Thank you. December, we're on audio tree. A lot of people watching this. Roll, you, you saw me put this on this morning. You know? Well, I just think, you know, this is kind of something you should be taking seriously. You know, it's kind of like my Jimmy Kimmel moment. Um, well, well, Skyler, what seriously. are you doing? I would wear, you know, a Hawaiian shirt on your big day, so. Do you want me to take it off? Yeah. Yes. Hi, this is Luke LeCount, the director of the Taking Meds documentary. Uh, as you can see from some of the footage uh, that I just got, I was not in Chicago for the Audio Tree live session. I was asked by Skylar to stay home, which is what I'm doing. I'm taking care of myself and taking care of my mental health. Uh, he told me that the reason why I was not welcome in Chicago uh, was that I was creating turmoil within the band. Uh, I was asking too many questions. You know, it's like with my with with filming, asking too many questions, uh, just trying to make a documentary for the label. You know, thank you to Smart Punk for, you know, trying to allow me to have this opportunity. I really appreciate it. Um, but as you can see, it's not me. It's not me doing this. It's Skyler, Skyler that is just creating destruction all around him. You know, constantly on the phone with. I, with, with who, who, I don't even know who this hotel is, trying to get a partial night's stay. He doesn't have the points. He hasn't, he's li he lies. It's, you can see it around Skylar. He just, he has to be the center of attention. And he tries to say that like, oh, I am trying to be the center of attention, uh, but I just have a camera. I mean, he's, it's his face. You know, I use a lot of close-ups because he asked, he asked me to make sure that I get close-ups of his face. Well, this is this is my one chance to be to be on camera and not behind the camera, and I just wanted to make this uh, video so that you know, in, in case nobody ever sees me again, if nobody ever sees the tapes again, uh, that it's not me that was creating all of this. It is Skylar. That's what that's what I'm saying, man. Like you let me worry about this stuff. You just make sure that you're fulfilling your end of the contract, which is legally binding, which I'm not, you know, afraid to to pursue my legal avenues of, of lawsuits against you um, otherwise. So just maybe just think about that. Cause it